Welcome to this episode of Fizz Takeouts. This community sound by side needs to go. Made possible by IIE Rosebank College, an educational brand of the Independent Institute for Education, dedicated to providing students with a solid foundation and creating future thinkers to build successful careers. I'm your host, Angie White, and I'm very excited to introduce today's guest. Lillian Bususu is the National Skills Development Manager at IIE Rosebank College, who will be sharing details of the college's graduate empowerment program how the college prepares students for the world of work and the impact that COVID-19 has had on education and employment. Welcome, Lillian. Oh, thank you so much, Angie. Thank you for having us. Okay, so Lillian, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you with us. Let's start off, Lillian, with maybe you could just tell us a bit about your role at the IIE Rosebank College. Okay. Uh, thank you for that uh, question, uh, Angie. Uh, um, I think I'll start by saying, actually, we all attend school for a reason. Every one of us go to school for a reason. And it's actually to prepare ourselves either to become self-employed or uh, to join the labor market. Uh, whatever one decides, uh, you know, the route that you're going to take. At the end of it all, um, we need to, you know, to make use of it. So my role, actually, is to bridge that gap between the classroom uh, and the world of work, uh, equipping you know the students and uh, the graduates also with what we call employment attraction skills uh, that employers look for in graduates that are entering the world of work for the first time. So we are actually a team that uh, coaches students. We coach graduates uh, with those soft skills uh, to just complete that tertiary cycle so that when this young person is actually entering the world of work they enter with that confidence with that knowledge with the skills that uh, you know for them to succeed as business people or even as uh, as employees so they enter the world of work with that boldness so that's what we actually do that's that's my um my 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 my, my position excellent thanks Lillian. and while we're on that topic could you please explain the role of the college's graduate empowerment program and why GE teams are important in tertiary institutions? Okay, within uh, the IAE Roseman College, we actually implemented the graduate empowerment program in 2012. And uh, the reason why we implemented it, we, we saw that uh, a lot of graduates that were entering the world of work were actually struggling you know, to enter the job market and uh, also we went to market we conducted a research you know with various uh, employers just to give us feedback on the skills that we're actually lacking as far as new graduates that are entering the world of work was concerned and uh, what we also did we conducted also a research with our students you know just to try to get an understanding uh, a deeper understanding of where they stand or their understanding or how they perceived uh, the world of between what industry was saying and the perception of the students or the graduates as far as employability skills are concerned. So this is how we actually created this graduate empowerment program because it was to bridge that gap um, for, from what the employers were saying and uh, what the students or graduates were saying. We married the two and we called it an empowerment program because it was actually to empower our students or our graduates with the employability skills uh, that um, uh, employers were, were looking for. So within IIE, we consult extensively with industry, you know, just to match the qualifications, enhance their, those employability skills, and also to shift uh, their mindsets uh, into conforming to what industry is actually looking for. And yes, when you talk about employability programs within tertiary institutions, I think this is something that we need to start really from uh, primary uh, uh, education. And every curricula, you know, at an institution of education must definitely include employability skills, uh, whether it's primary, whether it's secondary, or it's tertiary. Because the world of work is actually e e evolving tremendously. And uh, if our education system don't keep up, we'll find ourselves preparing graduates for a world of work that no longer is, exists, or we will find ourselves with graduates that are holding qualifications that are no longer relevant to the world of work. So every education system, therefore, must actually include work-related learning 
in all programs, not just some, but in all uh, programs. And um, when I look at the words of Albert Einstein, he once actually said, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. So it actually means that the language of employability should become a standard feature of uh, higher education programs, uh, you know, with uh, broad-based, uh, we should actually include broad-based uh, efforts to maximize students' opportunities to develop those employability skills within that learning environment so that these young people, when they leave an education system, they understand what the world of work is looking for. And that's how we can actually prepare them. So yes, every tertiary institution, every education system must definitely have an employability program some way, somehow. I definitely agree with you 100%. And then Lillian, tell me, as a tertiary institution, how do you prepare graduates for the world of work? Well, there are many things that we actually do, you know, from the minute, you know, this young, these young people walk into our corridors, you know, in their first years. Uh, we start, uh, you know, talking about employability because we're actually preparing them for the world of work. So we prepare them for both entrepreneurship uh, because, I mean, there are no jobs. Uh, and we also prepare, pre prepare them for uh, becoming an employee. So our work-ready program starts from orientation. The minute they will actually walk into our doors, we start preparing them for the world of work. And uh, also during their studies, you know, through what we call work integrated learning, there are some um, modules that we run with regards to employability. And uh, lastly, in their, exist in their uh, exiting uh, year, we actually intensify our efforts uh, through the work ready uh, coaching sessions that we do. And these are sessions that uh, uh, we motivate them, we change their mindset, we give them that knowledge about the world of work and how, to, how they can actually package themselves or stand out as far as the world of work is concerned. And we actually call it, you know, the distinguishing factor. How do you distinguish yourself in the world of work uh, through your CV writing, through your um, going for interviews? So, in fact, our di di distinguishing factor mantra, we actually say, learn the rules of the game play by a different set of standards, raise your personal standards and career standards and play to win. So whatever uh, these young people are doing, they need to raise their uh, you know, personal standards so that they can be able to be noticed to carry that distinguishing factor in everything that they do. So this is how we actually uh, close the gap by teaching them the skills they need to build. If they are to survive in the world of work, it's hard out there, it's not easy. And some of the stuff that we teach them is all about critical thinking. We, we, we teach them about people's skills, self-leadership, self-management, so that they're able to actually manage themselves when they go into the world of work. So that's how we actually prepare our students or our graduates for the world of work. I love that. Definitely so important to do your best to stand out in this climate that we're in at the moment. And on that note, Lillian, what oh, is definitely. the best piece of advice you could give somebody who's actively looking for and applying for a job? Well, uh, uh, Angie, I'll go back to our mantra, like what I said. I will, you know, uh, learn the rules of the game, play by a different set of standards, raise your personal and career standards, and play to win. And I'm saying this because, you know, when you learn the rules of the game, we need to understand the environment that we're actually operating in, that we need to shift our mindsets into conforming what the world of work is actually looking for. So when we say, learn the rules of the game, we are actually saying, learn what is happening, currently happening, so that you can align yourself to what is happening and become the best. So, uh, you know, looking for a job is actually a full-time job. And this is what uh, young people need to understand, that uh, looking for a job is actually uh, a full-time job and you need to distinguish yourself in all the aspects of the job hunting uh, process. You need to bring your A, a game, be it CV writing, be it uh, an interview, the way you dress, the way you rock up for an interview, whether it's online, you need to actually bring your A game. And uh, you need to also look for relevant jobs because what we are realizing is that people are applying aimlessly because there are no jobs up, out there. So people are just doing, uh, you know, just 
applying for any job that they see on online, where, on websites, on everywhere, and yet sometimes they don't even qualify for it. And uh, also their cover letter and CV needs to be professionally done because this is the world we're living in. Uh, the world of work is actually looking for the, you know, the cream of the crop. So it's all about how do you prepare yourself when you're looking for a job, your cover letter, how do you dress? You know, you dress appropriately for, for the interview, be it face to face or online. You need to understand what are the rules of face to face. You need to understand what are the rules of online so that you can actually prepare yourself properly. And uh, in the interview, you actually need to know your story. Uh, we, we talk about, uh, you know, mastering the art of interviews in our coaching sessions. And this is all about how do you become a distinguishing factor, you know, in, in an interview. It's how you articulate yourself, how you present yourself, bringing your A game uh, to, the, to, 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 the, to the table. And also it's all about follow-ups. How do you follow up? You need to remain professional in every follow-up that you do, not to become you know, too familiar with the people that actually interviewed you. So those are some of the things that uh, you know, I can actually advise young people or uh, the advice that I can give to somebody who's actually actively uh, looking for a job at this present moment. Times are tough, so you need to really bring your A game in this job hunting process. Definitely, could not agree. Yeah. And then Lillian, what are some of the ways you've seen COVID-19 and the lockdown impact the world of work? And has it made the transition from students to employee more difficult? You know, COVID-19 uh, worsened things because we were already in uh, economic uh, climate, uh, you know, rundown uh, when COVID just really then put the nail <laughs> on the coffin. It really changed the way we do business uh, because firstly, I mean, in, in terms of, you know, even working from home, that was the, you know, the change of the, the business scenario that people were now required uh, to work from home. But I think we need to firstly understand and acknowledge uh, the negative impact of COVID-19 besides all the other uh, you know, things that we went through before COVID-19, uh, you know, uh, came onto our scene. So when we acknowledge that, it's easier for us then to say, okay, how do I then move forward in terms of the job hunting process? We need to look at, I mean, there's so many job losses that uh, have affected uh, the, 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 impact, um, the, the impact of how we do business, you know, salary cuts, closures of companies and all those things. And when you have this understanding, it helps you to know uh, then that uh, even when you're looking for a job, you have to be at your best uh, in terms of everything that you are required to do. Uh, and you know, when we look at students or graduates, that transition has become even more difficult because we are talking of people that never had, that don't have experience. And um, getting into uh, the recruitment processes that have been so tightened, it, it, it's so difficult for them to really sometimes acquaint with what e everything is going on. But now organizations are looking for the cream of the crop. So one needs to really package them in that, in, in that to package themselves in, in such a way that when somebody looks at your CV, or even when you go for an interview, uh, they will be able to distinguish you and to say, this is the kind of person that we, we, we want to employ. So there's a lot of changes that have taken place. And I think as young people or students or graduates, they need to understand that things have changed. So they need to really align themselves to what is going on. And with uh, actually, with regards to graduates, the company, there are companies that are out there that are actually you know, recruiting young people. So uh, they don't need to be despondent. In fact, Angie, we have just placed about 33 uh, graduates in one company, IT wow. graduates in one company. There are op opportunities that are out there, but young people need to understand that that transitioning is going to be very difficult because they're not only competing with themselves. They're not only competing with their peers. They're competing with people that have also lost jobs but it doesn't mean that they are not going to get jobs it's how one packages themselves because the screws have been tightened the recruitment processes have been tightened i mean you start with your telephonic interview if you are not good with your telephonic interview uh, they don't even call you for one-on-one -on -one or online so all those processes one needs to master themselves uh, so that when they are 
actually going for those interviews, be it online or face-to-face, -face, they've really packaged themselves in such a way uh, that companies will look at them and uh, they will want to actually have them to work for them. So that's how I, I, I it's become so difficult, Angie, that uh, young people need to really understand that. Well, it's awesome to hear of the good news that there is still hope. So really, really encouraging, I think, for a lot of people to hear that. There is. And then on that note, how do you manage yeah. expectations versus what is realistic in terms of students' goals and their dream jobs while still fueling their ambition at the same time? Ah, Angie, it's all about educating these young people and we need to do it authentically. Uh, we need to be realistic, you know, about the world of work and how it actually operates, you know, the current scenario, the business scenario that we have so that they are able to align their goals realistically. So it's all about education, education, and education. And when we are talking about education, it's not just about academics. Mm -hmm. There is so many ways that young people can actually learn. So it, we are talking about the, you know, the three forms of education, that is your formal, informal, and uh, through experiences as well. So we who have been there, we need to really be authentic in our approach as we are talking to young people about the world of work and let's be real about them so that they are able to then align themselves and when we do that we're actually directing their their passions and we're directing what they are good at so that we are fueling them towards their aspirations and their ambitions because if we lie to them uh, they will find themselves in a world that no longer exists, in a world where they will come back and they say, but you lied to us about what is happening in the world of work. So how we can actually manage their expectations by being authentic in even the, uh, the uh, employability programs that we have in tertiary uh, you know, uh, institutions, even at work, we need to be very real uh, to them, be realistic and be authentic in our approach as far as young people are concerned. So that's, uh, that's how we can actually manage their expectations. I like that. I like focusing on their passions and their interests and fueling that. I think that's a good way to go, definitely. And then while we're on the topic yes. of yeah. focusing on being realistic, gender inequality in the workplace is still a huge issue in South Africa, despite the fact that approximately 51% of men have diplomas or higher, compared to 59% of women. What do you think is needed to close this gap between men and women? And what tools do you offer students to deal with this issue? And gender inequality has always been a thorn in, in, in the workplace. And um, whilst many organizations, and I think we need to acknowledge this, whilst many organizations are doing their very best to level the ground, uh, it's going to take each individual to shift you know, our mindsets um, uh, to understand that we're all equal in the workplace. So it also requires education, you know, uh, organizations uh, uh, teaching people on what uh, gender inequality is and how we can equalize it. But uh, I think I must say this, uh, you know, when each of us, when we have that realization that it starts with us, we then begin to treat each other, you know, with that respect and uh, firstly as humans and also to respect the skill that somebody is uh, bringing in, it's not about, uh, you know, uh, you're a male or female. Uh, it's all about uh, the skill that you're bringing in. And I'm going to respect you for what you are carrying. I'm going to respect you for how you are working and all that. But let me say this. It's going to take uh, your skill as an individual to equalize that playing field because it's not easy. Uh, your skill that you bring in, that's what is going to... Uh, equalize what you bring into the marketplace. It's your responsibility uh, to bring that A game for people to respect, respect you, whether you're male, whether you're female, you will be recognized and acknowledged for what you are bringing. So instead of crying foul, having the victim mentality, you can only ch challenge the status quo uh, by your skill, what you're bringing in. Are you an asset? Are you that kind of a person who is just complaining? People are not actually going to respect you, but it doesn't matter who you are, whether female or male, but uh, the world of work is actually going to respect what you are uh, bringing. So this is something that we actually, even in our uh, you know, institution, you know, when we're doing a coaching session, it, it's all about um, uh, the quality education. This is how we are empowering our students and our graduates. 
you know, giving them that quality education uh, through our will and uh, the GEP coaching sessions where we align everything to their aspirations so that when they actually go into the world of work, they don't look at themselves, oh, I am male or I am female, but it's all about what they are actually bringing in uh, to, 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 to the world of work. So every one of our students, we, 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 they are special to us. And uh, obviously, we treat them equally in the way that we actually do things. And this is also something that they carry into the world of work, knowing that people respect the skill that I'm bringing in. So that's how uh, you know, I feel about gender equality. It's something that is a, it's an individual uh, space where you have to own your space as an individual, despite your gender. 100% agree. And I think it's very important as social institutions to start with that education, I think that's, that is the future at the end of the day. So definitely if the students are understanding yeah. that, then yeah. they're going to carry that through, through their careers. So very important and awesome that tertiary institutions are yeah. doing that. Yeah. So well done to you. Thank you. you. <laughs> the fourth industrial yeah. resolution is seeing skills training and reskilling becoming a necessary thing. How is this changing the types of programs that your institution offers and the way students are being taught? And you know, when people talk about the fourth industrial revolution, they talk about it like it's something that is going to come in the future. Uh, this thing has been happening even since, you know, uh, time immemorial, because when we look at even the radios that we used to have, we no longer have them, the telephones that we used to have, uh, we no longer have them. And as an institution within IRE, we started playing in this space, I think, uh, uh, three, four years ago when we, we put in place the, what we call the three uh, model phase. And that was four years ago when we actually implemented it. So you will hear of what we call the connected campuses. It's all about IT uh, skills that are integrated within all our modules. So that's what we actually do. We, we've been doing it for the past uh, uh, four years. So all our programs, uh, it doesn't matter what program you're doing. It can be business, it can be accounting, it can be you know, marketing. Every one of our, uh, our programs, there is an, an IT component. And the reason why we actually do that is because this is the fourth industrial revolution uh, uh, landscape that we are playing in. And when we realized that as an institution, we started by equipping it, you know, imparting it to our students so that uh, uh, they also understand the IT space. And it's very interesting, you know, the transformation when they really get to understand what IT is all about. And even when we went into a lockdown, we never had many problems that other institutions had because our, our students were already aligned to IT. They knew what was happening, including our lecturers as well. So it was a, an easy transitioning you know, into, into, into the teaching and learning space because it's something that we had already been doing. Uh, so this is what we're actually doing within you know, uh, our programs, you know, having an integration of the IT skills in our curricula. So that's how we've been actually doing it at IE Rosebank College. That's amazing that there was very little disruption. I'm sure a lot of institutions would love to be in the same space. So definitely a, a benefit for you, yeah, I think. Yeah. And then, Nelly, in the last question yeah. for today, there's currently a significant shortage of jobs in South Africa, which you briefly touched on earlier, which makes it even more difficult than usual to get a job, let alone a job in an individual's field of study. Tell me, how does IIE mm. Roseland College deal with this dilemma and what are your top tips for becoming and staying employable? Yeah, there's a lot that is happening. You know, when I was growing up, NG, uh, we were taught that uh, go to school, get a degree, go to work, stay in that workplace as long as you want and then uh, you retire, you get a wheelbarrow or a watch and then go home and wait to die. Things have shifted because then jobs were in abundance. So you could actually be in, 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 in one company uh, for as long as you, you, <laughs> you are alive. I remember my father was in the National Railways for all his life until he actually retired. 
but things have actually uh, shifted. So long ago, people were guaranteed of jobs, but this is no longer the case. And uh, in fact, when we look at what, what the, 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 the impact of COVID-19, it has made things even harder even to find a job. So my message to, firstly, I'll start with those that are still in employment. Take that job as if you are employing yourself. You need to become self-employed in that particular job, in as much as an organization that is employing you, because jobs are not there. Uh, as we all know, companies have actually closed. So when you have a job uh, these days, it, it, it's really a privilege to have that job. Own your space in that job and have your own performance template. Gone are those days when we need to be appraised by a manager. You need to appraise yourself in that particular job. You need to manage yourself and you need to raise your personal uh, performance standards. So that's for those that are actually, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in employment currently. It's all about uh, shifting our mindsets uh, into becoming entrepreneurs or becoming our own employers um, because... Um, uh, when, we, like I said, when we look at the salary that we're getting every month, one can actually wake up every day for 31 days in a month and being able to sell something to get that amount of uh, money that they get from a salary. So we need to shift our mindset from, you know, becoming uh, employees to actually becoming our own employers or becoming our own uh, self-employed, you know, in terms of uh, employing ourselves in doing something that we can actually you know, be selling, whether it be online, whether it's door to door, whichever way you want to become an employee, an employer, uh, then you can actually do that. So, yeah. That's really, really excellent advice, Lillian. And some of it that I think I will take myself. So thank you for that. And thank you for joining me today for this interview. Thank you. Very, very insightful. That's a wrap on today's show with thanks to Thank the so IIE Rosebank College for making it possible. It's Biz Take Us. Take it where you like it, when you like it. Until next time.